When I first started shooting with film, I sent everything off to a lab and was always really happy with the results. I always used the same lab and and come back and be like, man, this is awesome. But I quickly realized that if I was going to really take shooting on film as a serious medium for me, I would have to start learning how to develop and scan everything myself. So I remember buying all the stuff, getting super excited about it, and buying, like, at the time, three three packs of Kodak Gold for, like, around 30 bucks. It was pretty cheap. Practice color developing, practice black and white developing, and just uh, really made honestly every single mistake I probably could have made not having the Patterson tank all the way sealed and going to like rinse out or like dump out the water and the top coming off and all the film just coming out right in the beginning right after getting out of the dark bag but you know we've learned from that we've grown from that and now I really like developing and scanning my own work I've gotten a pretty good workflow that I've really enjoyed but recently a uh, couple approached me, some friends, and they said that they wanted me to photograph their wedding and they wanted me to predominantly shoot it on film. And I didn't feel super confident in taking the risk of developing it all by myself. And so I decided to send it off to a lab and I included a few roles that had just been sitting around that I needed to get developed anyways so that we could do the side-by-side -side comparison. When I got the scans delivered from the lab, I was actually pretty shocked. Um, I think that it was not quite what I was expecting. It had been a lab that I'd used before, but I'm gonna go ahead and play a side-by-side -side comparison and guess in the comments what you think was the lab scans and which ones were my own scans using that setup. do you think was the lab scans a or b uh, comment it down below and like and subscribe okay so b was my scans uh i was when i got these back i was absolutely shocked i'll be honest um i didn't get a chance to really like dive into them right when they were delivered to me so i had i actually had the negatives returned by the time that i could reach back out to the lab and be like hey i these aren't what i was expecting uh, but I'm not gonna put this lab on blast. It's really not, this video is not about that. When you're sending rolls of film to a lab, most of them give you options on like, hey, send along how you want it edited. Send along if you want it professionally corrected, what direction you want that to go. And I'd sent it to them before and really enjoyed the results that I've gotten from them. So I didn't really worry about that too much, but I was definitely uh, wrong because this is, very blue, very blown out in my opinion. But why don't we jump into my computer and we can take a closer look at a few of these shots and I can show you my workflow and how I convert these negatives using Negative Lab Pro. So here I am, I've got this photo of the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains in the Smoky National Park. So I'll white balance over here and then with this new version of Negative Lab Pro, it gives you a preview of your border buffer. So I don't crop. And that is it. 
And that just right out of the gate is looking so much better than the lab scans in my opinion. And so from there, I will hone in on the white balance a little bit. Like I think the shadows uh, I can bring up and I'll do this right in Negative Lab Pro. Um, bring up the shadows a bit, bring up the warmth and maybe a little bit of magentas. And that's just a, a quick edit there. And I think that looks really good. Um, next is this image also from our trip to the Great Smoky Mountains. And this is actually right outside of our Airbnb. Uh, it was on this little river. So I uh, white balance again for the negative. And that like right out of the gate looks really close to what it looked like when we were there. And so that's really exciting. Uh, same thing here. I like to lift my shadows just a little bit and it was a little bit warmer. That feels pretty nice to me. Again, I go in and I'll tinker a little bit more with these, but as a base edit, this looks really, really nice. And um, here, this is a fun one because it was just a nice comparison. Um, this was a tennis court and I remember looking at it and just being like, oh, the light's really nice. And yeah, that looks so much better. I'll just warm it up because it is that like chalky warm red and that is actually a green tennis court and that looks really, really nice. Here, I love this. Uh, I was doing some series with a I live in a, in a fishing town. Actually, I don't even really think of it as being a fishing town, uh, but it, we've got a charter and marina and everything. And so this guy is one of the charter fishermen and saw him sitting out waiting and he, it was just, uh, I thought a great shot. So I'll bring up some of the red and magenta, make it a little bit warm. It was early, earlier in the morning this summer I'll bring up the shadows just a little bit. That's where they fillet the fish for you after you've caught it. And that's really, really cool to watch. And then here's uh, some guys walking down the marina. I loved this. I loved just their, looked like they, they'd been friends for a long time. And yeah, loved the look specifically. I love this guy's outfit and his hat. Just really, really cool, really vibing. And yep, I'll warm it up a little bit, bring in some more reds. And it's a great starting spot for that one. Here's a black and white. So go ahead, run it black and white instead of Frontier. And looks great. Gonna lift up the shadows a little bit, a lot actually right in. I think I'm going to drop those highlights so you can still see out the window pretty well. Another black and white. This is at a park that my family goes to. And yeah, that looks really nice. There's a lot of rich color or rich uh, contrast and texture. This is with HP5 and I've pushed it uh, two stops. So I'm, I'm really looking for that punchy contrast that's in the in the negative. Pierre is back in Gatlinburg, Great Smoky Mountains. And this is the, again, same same river right outside of the Airbnb that we were staying at. And it was just such a cool, cool area. And yeah, I mean, the just the texture, I'll, I'll put this one, uh, the lab scan of this one right next to it because this, the trees, which are technically in shadow, were really, really blown out. Um, 
I'm actually going to bring the shadows down in this one a little bit, warm it up. Add a little magenta and maybe a little less, maybe pull it back. Again, I'm going to pull the shadows down a bit and the highlights down. That looks really good to me. Great starting spot. And here, Great Smoky Mountains again. And yeah, let's just kind of warm it up a little bit. I don't want to take too much of that texture out of the sky. And then I'll bring up the shadows. And I love, I mean, it's the Blue Ridge Mountains and that, that's, they got their nickname because of the, how blue they look and really keeping that looks really nice to me. So that's a good spot, starting spot for that. And then here's the last one. This one is at a cottage in Northern Michigan. And this one, I, I really like the way that that comes out. I mean, it feels like a painting to me. So, so beautiful. So I'll, again, I'll lift the shadows just a little bit to get a little bit more detail in there. Warm it up, not a whole lot. And that looks really good to me. So yeah, I think uh, just one of the fun things about film is that you can mess around with it and play with it and you can get a lot of different looks. Most of the color here, actually I think all of the color negatives here were on Portra 400 and that's really known for its pastel uh, looks. And the scans that I got just were really not even close to that. And it's really cool how you can take your images and make them look like how you want them to look. And it really is, the film stock really is a great starting spot, especially when you've got a film stock like Portra 400 or HP5 or one of my personal favorites, Kodak Gold, that you can have a lot of latitude and move it in the direction of where you want the final image to look. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it to this point, please like and subscribe. It really does make a big difference. And I'll see you in the next video.